can't do it by myself. If you don't help me, I gotta find somebody else. I might have to wash, might have to sew, might have to cook. I might have mob my flow, but help me now. I can't do it by myself. You don't help me. I gotta find somebody else. And welcome to Unity Temple in the Plaza, a place where diversity is praised and peace and harmony are the rewards. I'm happy to be here with you today. As I sit here and I look out in an empty auditorium, I can imagine each and every one of you sitting in the seat that you normally sit in. And then when I go and try to imagine you at home watching this, my mind goes to a different place. It's like you're in your pajamas, your hair hasn't been fixed, you haven't shaved yet, you had a cup of coffee in your hand. Both of you are lovable, and I just wanted to say I can't wait until you join us back here in the auditorium at Unity. Before we begin the service this morning, I have a few short announcements, but before I get to that, I'd like to tell you a story. It's about a woman who went on vacation with her husband and two children to a resort just outside a very quaint village in northern Maine. The woman had heard that the bakery in town had the best ice cream in the entire area. So one morning, she got up before everybody else, drove into town, went to the bakery to get some ice cream. Well, when she walked into the bakery, she discovered there was only one other customer in the whole place, sitting at the counter, having a cup of coffee, and eating a donut. She realized it was Paul Newman. And she became flustered. Her heart began to beat fast. She became flushed. She couldn't even get the words out of her mouth to make her order, and so she just left the bakery immediately. When he got outside, she began to talk to herself. She said, listen, you're 45 years old. You've got two kids. You've been married for over 20 years. You're a grown woman. You love your husband. You've got a great family. Quit acting like a goofy little teenage girl that's in love for the first time. So she pulled herself together, went back into the bakery, and ordered her ice cream. When the ice cream came, the man behind the counter gave her her change. 
and she quickly left once again. When she got to her car, she recognized in one hand she still had her change, but in the other hand she didn't have anything. Oh no, she thought, I left my ice cream in the bakery. So somewhat embarrassingly, she went back to the bakery, walked in, looked for ice cream on the counter, couldn't find it, looked for it behind the counter, couldn't find it, looked all over, couldn't find it. And at last, she just glanced over at Paul Newman. And he smiled and said, you put it in your purse. Yes, come on, let, let that laughter roll. That's what we need is a little happiness this morning. Anyway, everything is pretty it's the same here at Unity Temple in the Plaza. We're still on lockdown, and that means that we have no activities going. The only people coming into the building are people with deliveries or those that are on the crew of the Sunday morning streaming service. And people are asking, when are we going to open again? Well, the question to that, or the answer to that is, is I don't know. I'd like to open tomorrow. I'd like to open as soon as possible. But it's not up to me. It's not my will be done, but rather those who we rely on for counsel. We are three people, and when those three people say it's safe to open, then we will do so. They are Deepika Polanani, Dr. Deepika Polanali from KU Med Center. They are Mayor Quentin Lucas, who's operating on behalf of the city. And there's Dr. Normal Viramachi Me who's also a doctor at the KU Med Center. When the three of them say it's safe, we open the doors and move on. Now, in addition to the detrimental physical aspects of the COVID-19, it also is weighing on us in an emotional and in a stress-filled way. You know, I have found myself, when I look in the mirror, to have aged 20 years during the last two months. And I'm sure that's the same for many of you. But the good news is the directory that we started putting together a year and a half ago will be out in June. And the better news is when the directory comes out, your picture in the directory is going to make you look so good because you're a year and a half younger, you're all dolled up, and you're looking like a hundred bucks or a million bucks. So keep your eye open for the directory and know that uh, you will be proud the way you look inside. Here's a question for you. Is there a cure for loneliness or despair? Now just think about that for a moment. The answer will be coming in Reverend Sandra's lesson today. We also take time this morning to honor our volunteers who've been working through this COVID-19 period. These are people that come down and deliver sack lunches to the people on the streets. These are people that take produce to the different shelters in town. It's a fine group of people who make masks to give away to anyone who needs one. And so for this part of the service, we're going to now pay tribute to our wonderful volunteers. Help. I need somebody help, not just anybody help. You know, I need someone help. When I was young, was so much younger than
to all our volunteers out there that might be watching, I send you our love, I send you our, our peace, I send you our protection, I send you everything so that you may have a wonderful, fulfilling, and pleasurable life. Thank you so much for what you do. We now begin the service with the temple chimes, the opening prayer. And the opening prayer will be on the screen. Please say it with me if you choose. On this day, we dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. We accept ourselves without harsh judgment and express appreciation for our individuality. We live without fear to meet the events of this day with confidence. We accept others without prejudice to experience a sense of unity with all people. We honor our earthly environment and recognize a oneness with all creation. In harmony with ourselves, our lives, other people, and all of nature, we live this day with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. Thank you, God. Amen. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can lift a spirit with a word or a song, if I can tell some traveler that he's going wrong, then my living 
see in my imagination. But as my mom says, when a friend hasn't seen her in a long time, and says, Mary, it's so good to see you, and her response is, it is good to be seen. So thanks to Cassie Bender, our amazing production manager, it is good to be seen. You see, she's a digital native, along with Sharon Kelly, Christopher Schultz, Chad Carr, and others who are working on the staff diligently to bring this service every Sunday through technology. But I am a digital immigrant, meaning I'm just feeling my way through territory where I've never traveled before, a language that I don't speak, and a culture that I don't quite understand in technology. But I'm getting there, thanks to them. I want to thank our wonderful musicians today, Hayden Smith and Clay Kirkland, for bringing this service, as well as our very own Duke Tufty, our senior minister on the platform. Thinking about being a digital immigrant and a digital native, I'm reminded of something I read recently that, was, that sounded something like I would have done. A gentleman, probably in my category, a digital immigrant, contacted customer support because he couldn't figure out how to work his computer. The really nice person, the tech support person, a digital Im native, uh, said, oh sure, I can help you with that. He said, what's your name? He said, my name is Bob. He said, okay, Bob, I need you to right click on your desktop. And Bob says, okay. He says, okay, the tech support says, okay, now, Bob, did you right click on your desktop and do you see a pop-up menu? And Bob says, no, I don't see anything. So the tech support person very calmly says, okay, Bob, I need you to right click again. Do you see a pop-up menu? And Bob says, no. He says, okay, let me try this a different way. Tell me what you've done so far. And Bob says, well, I did what you told me. You said right click and I wrote click. Now, that might sound funny to you, but it's like speaking two different languages. And that's just how it is right now with this technology and we're feeling our way. You know, I'm reminded of the book when I think about what I'm gonna to talk to you about today, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. You might remember some of the first lines that are most famous from that book. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going the other way. Now these words written more than 160 years ago are as true today as they were when Dickens wrote the book. We could say, during this pandemic, these are the best of times, these are the worst of times. Best of times for some people, because some people have taken time to step away from their busy schedules. By no choice of their own, they have been social distancing, being more calm and peaceful, reading more, talking to loved ones, doing FaceTime and Skype and emails, really thinking and relaxing and breathing, some of them for the first time. But the worst of times for those who are lonely and feel anxious and uncertain about the future and worried about their loved ones, those who are grieving, those who've experienced loss, these are the best of times and the worst of times. It's all depending on how you look at it and what you're going through. You know, when I first decided to talk about this, I remembered that Clay sang as an opening last Sunday, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. And boy, did that get my attention, one of my favorite songs. But then I thought, I'm gonna be talking about the key to overcoming any obstacle is kindness. Finding things that we can do to be kind to ourselves and to others. And when I looked up kindness, in the Bible, it's mentioned over 500 times when you combine the mentions in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Only the words are often not kindness per se, but mercy and forgiveness and grace. All the same as kindness. So when he sang that song, Mercy, 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 little did he know I'd be talking about that this Sunday. But that's not a surprise because as I always say, the music is the message. 
So thank you, Clay, for bringing that last Sunday. You know, the world's wisdom teachers all talk about kindness in different ways. In the Buddhist tradition, they say kindness. Kindness is our Buddha nature. The Dalai Lama said, my religion is simple. My religion is kindness. In the Hindu tradition, they say one should not have behave towards others in a way that is disagreeable to oneself. In other words, be kind to yourself, and you can't help but be kind to everybody else. In Judaism, they say, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. And in Islam, they say, not one of you is a believer until you love for your brother or sister what you love for yourself. The Native American code of respect is to feel or show honor or esteem for someone or something to consider the well-being of or treat someone or something with deference or courtesy. In other words, what they're saying is to treat others with kindness, with mercy. The Sufi order is in material attainment, you must take. In spiritual attainment, you must give. In material attainment, you must learn. In spiritual attainment, you must unlearn. And what does the spiritual ask for? For this very thing, self. Give up the false self and gain the real self. And loving kindness is a way to give up your false self. In Christianity, we call it the golden rule. And we find it in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, and in Luke chapter 6, verse 31. The golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In Christianity, we see the, ourselves in the image and likeness of God. And in unity's first principle, God is good. All knowing, all power, all loving, all kindness. God is good and God is in everything and everywhere. And we like God are the expressions of God and we express that goodness and that kindness as a natural part of our being. Unity's second principle is that we are expressions of kindness, expressions of the good that God is. As told in the Gospels, Jesus provided many examples of how to be kind. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 35th through the 40th verses, he's speaking to the disciples and giving them a lesson about kindness. He says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. The disciples were confused by that. None of that made any sense. And they said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the master teacher said to them, Whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. A story is told in Reader's Digest by Leslie Wagner of Peel, Arkansas, about an incident that occurred in a local grocery store. When the clerk at the store tallied up the woman's groceries, the woman realized that she was $12 short and she didn't have any more money in her purse. The man standing behind her in line, a total stranger, handed her a $20 bill, which she immediately refused. No, sir, thank you very much. I can't take that. Please don't go out of your way. I'll be okay, as she proceeded to put back some of the groceries. The man said, let me tell you a story. My mother's in the hospital with cancer. Every day I visit my mother and I bring her flowers. But today when I brought her flowers, she was very upset with me. And she said, stop wasting your money on these flowers. Take that money and do something good for somebody else. So please take this $20 bill. These are my mother's flowers. You know, that story really resonated with me because my mother is from a little town in Arkansas and the writer was from a little town, Peel, Arkansas. Mama's little town is called Strong. And my mother often talks to me about the importance of flowers, but only flowers and what she's speaking of is a metaphor for kindness, for love, for attention. My mother loves a song, 
by the late Reverend James Cleveland, Give Me My Flowers. And the verses are, Give me my flowers while I yet live, so that I can see the beauty that they bring. Speak kind words to me while I can still hear them, so that I can hear the comfort that they bring. That's how we spread kindness, little by little, thought by thought. So I want to talk to you today about kindness in the midst of this coronavirus that has spread all over the world, how we can spread kindness, and it's contagious. The natural expression of happiness is to do good in the world, and it's our innate ability to do that. That's our natural inheritance. It's unity's second principle. So how are you doing good in your world today when there's so much pain and suffering, anxiety and uncertainty? Like the COVID-19 virus, kindness can spread and you can be the carrier. One simple act of kindness can spark a movement. It's always sparked movements. We hear about them in stories like the Reader's Digest story. Everyday people performing simple acts of kindness without expecting anything in return. What you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, you do for me. There was a movement started in the late, the mid 1990s called Random Acts of Kindness. A woman by the name of Ann Herbert claimed that she started it in around 1982 when she scribbled those words on a napkin at a restaurant in Sausalito, California. And since that time, it has spread like a virus around the world. In fact, there have been stories and lists and samples of how we can spread random acts of kindness. Even a book written by that title, 365 Ways to Make the World a Nicer Place, offers many suggestions on simple little things we can do every day to make the world kinder. A kindness, kindness movement, movement has started right here at this church at Unity Temple. Most recently, about a month ago, during the Metaphysical Bible Interpretation class, which we have on Sunday mornings from at 9 o'clock on Zoom, one of our members mentioned that she had been working on making masks for a local hospital through the, the store where she would buy her materials, her fabric and materials for quilting. And that's planted a seed for us to start our own mask making adventure for our temple congregation and their families. And so the first three people became our sewists, you might call them. Diane Pfeiffer, Nancy McCormick, and Kim Sheik. And then other people heard about it through word of mouth and you know kindness spreads like a virus. They wanted to be in on the act. So we were joined by some more sewists. Trish Fox and Mary Matthews and we have drivers, uh, we have Angela Eby as a, one of our sewists, and Clara Hoffman will be joining us as a sewist. And we have drivers, we have Fred Schell and Rosetta Bard, and then we were joined when Cindy Long heard about it, she wanted to drive. So they deliver our products and everybody's enjoying it. It's a labor of love and they're getting to know each other and most of them didn't know each other before. We have delivered, we have made and delivered more than 100 masks in just a matter of a few weeks to our congregants, their family members and friends throughout the greater Kansas City area, in Detroit and in Richmond, California. I am so grateful to be part of this amazing group of people who know how to spread kindness like a virus. We're all practicing unity's fifth principle, that we live the truth we know, we walk our talk, and we make a difference. And there are others doing the same kind of thing around Unity Temple. This is a huge movement. We have the garden fairies. Yesterday, they came out wearing their masks, maintaining their social distance, pulling weeds, planting flowers. And when you drive by the temple, they, work, they, they always do a masterpiece. It just looks like something that belongs on some kind of historical billboard or something because of the volunteers who don't mind getting their hands dirty to beautify our surroundings. That's kindness and it's contagious. When our son was in middle school, 
He was always losing his hat and gloves in the worst winter weather, and it would just really make me mad. I, I was constantly replacing hats and gloves. On one particular day, when he caught the bus from his school to come downtown to meet me at work, when he got to my job, he didn't have his hat and gloves on. It was the coldest day in January, and I was so upset with him. I just started scolding him, and I, I'm just tired of buying these hats and gloves, and what are you doing with them, and you're so careless. And He kept trying to stop me to get my attention, and finally I, I stopped a minute for him to talk. He said, Mom, I was trying to tell you that I did what you always told me to do. He said, as I was getting off the bus, there was a man holding a sign and asking for, for change. And I felt really badly because all I had was my bus ticket. Well, he was really cold, I could tell, he was shivering, and he, his coat was really worn and, and had holes in it, and he didn't have on a hat or gloves. So I took off my hat, I took off my gloves, and I gave them to him, because you always told me to be kind to strangers. What you do for the least of them, my brothers and sisters, you do for me. There was a child giving me a living example of what it means to be kind and how kindness spreads. He also added that, well, and then I walked the two blocks to your office and I wasn't cold at all. And we had a good laugh because what he told me so warmed my heart, I could imagine his heart was warm too, just by his action of being kind. Note to self. Yes, it is the best of times. It is the worst of times. There's a contagious virus spreading around the world. There's fear, anxiety, uncertainty, despair, there's grief, there's loss, there's hunger, there's homelessness. The best of times and the worst of times. But we can make the best of a bad situation. We can look for ways to show kindness. Because kindness and joy, while everything else has been shut down, they have not been canceled. But they are highly contagious and we can be the carriers. The quote from one of the famous speeches of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shortly before his assass assassination is so timely for today. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that the person who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness, he says. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato or Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. All you need is a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And Dr. King also said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what have you done for others? Thank you, Dr. King. I'm reminded of a quote, another quote that I love by Tagore. I slept and dreamt that life was service. I awoke and saw that life was joy. I acted, and behold, service is joy. There is great joy in serving our fellow person. We demonstrated on Sundays another movement outside Unity Temple right after the service about noon. Volunteers are handing out box lunches through a partnership between the Temple Helping Hands program and the Capitol Restaurant. And then when the, the, the homeless are no longer passing us on the sidewalk. Our volunteers get in their cars and drive around the city to the parks and the corners where the homeless are congregating or standing with their signs and hand them their free meal. You know, ran random acts of kindness work. Martin Kornfeld said, if we all do one random act of kindness daily, we just might set the world in the right direction. All of the world's wisdom teachings show us the same example. Be kind to others as we wish them to be kind to us. So I invite you to join us in looking for opportunities to turn what for some may be the worst of times into the best of times, simply by being kind. 
Kindness is contagious. Let's spread it around. It is now time for our meditation. If you're at home and you wish to join us, I invite you to find a comfortable place to sit. Take a few deep breaths, slowly exhale. And today we're going to do the loving kindness meditation. This is a time when we dedicate thoughts and feelings to ourselves, thoughts and feelings to somebody special in our lives, and thoughts and feelings to other people throughout the world. So please join with me in this meditation. As I speak these words, please make them your own. And we're going to say each one three times. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. 
May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. Now think of somebody in your life that's very special to you. Somebody that you've always loved and somebody that's always loved you. Hold their image in your mind and send them love. And as you do, speak these words to yourself. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be at ease and happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be at ease and happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer dangers. May you be well in body and mind. May you be at ease and happy. Now as you're sitting there in a meditative state with your eyes closed, imagine a bright light within you. Imagine that light being expressed to the room around you and everybody in the room. Imagine the light moving beyond your residence to your neighborhood. It continues to radiate out to your city, to your state, to this country, to everybody in the world. And as we do that, we say, may all people be filled with loving kindness. May all people be safe from inner and outer dangers. May all people be well in body and mind. May all people be at ease and happy. May all people be filled with loving kindness. May all people be safe from inner and outer dangers. May all people be well in body and mind. May all people be at ease and happy. May all people be filled with loving kindness. May all people be safe from inner and outer dangers. May all people be well in body and mind. May all people be at ease and happy. And with that blessing to ourselves, with that blessing to somebody special in our lives, and with that blessing to all the people in the world, we move into the silence.
slowly begin to bring yourself back from your meditative state. And as you do so, feel an exceptional joy in your heart. And we affirm, I live this day with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. Thank you, God. Amen. Sunlight hurts my eyes. There's something without warning, love. It's impossible to find. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. Just one look at you, and I know it's gonna be. to face when someone else ahead of me always seems to know the way then I look at you and the world's all right with me oh, oh, oh just want to look at you and I know it's gonna be Impossible to face when someone else instead of me always seems to know the way. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. The world's all right with me. Just one look at you, and I know it's gone. Thank you, Hayden and Clay. Once again, you just always seem to bring a great deal of pleasure to me with your music. Beautiful talents. This is our time to express our gratitude. And when I say that, I mean gratitude for everything. A gratitude for Unity Temple, gratitude for the city we live in, gratitude for the people that are in our lives that we get to express life, uh, love to. Gratitude for all. And during this time of COVID-19, it's easy to get distracted from our true goal. It's easy to think uh, negative thoughts, to get angry. We all have those days. But during those times, if we can just remember to pause, 
move into a calm state. Give a prayer of gratitude for all that we do have. And then take time to be happy. And take time to laugh. To show you how to do this, here are the precious faces. There are days for all of us when things just make us mad. This is wrong and that's not right. Everything is one big fight. When those dark and dreary days just happen to come around, take a few deep breaths, calm yourself, let peace of mind be found. And give your love to everyone and let your kindness flow you'll find there's happiness every place you go. Life is truly much more nice when you're walking in the light. Embrace the good that fills your life. Give thanks for all things great. Always have a cheerful smile and make a pleasant sound. Laugh out loud so very much you roll over on the ground. <laughs> Well, that concludes our service for today. I thank you very much for joining us. I'm happy that you're out there, and I look forward to hearing from you. But I do want to say we spent a great deal of the service today showing you some of the things that are going on. And that doesn't mean that I'm up here blowing our horn about how good we are. We don't deserve a standing ovation or a round of applause for what we're doing, simply because that's what churches do. That is our mission. It is to go to places where there is a need and help fill that need. Sometimes that need is a sense of happiness, a sense of belonging, a sense of recognition. Sometimes it's food to eat or a mask to keep from getting ill or a tree that's planted in the front yard. When you give your money to Unity Temple, it's not going for a lot of high salaries, it's not going for a lot of wasted things, it's going for the ministry, which is continually active during the good times as well as the difficult. So we now conclude the service with a prayer for protection, followed by the peace song. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.
Thank you.